What an insane two-day trip to Neath that was. I am wiped, heading home, gonna get home late, but I guess I gotta go back to the beginning to tell you the whole story. Good morning from Suffer, New York. It looks like it's gonna be a beautiful day for NEEF, the Northeast Astronomy Forum. So this event has been going on for a long time. They have world-renowned speakers and NASA scientists and astronauts and astro imagers. It's a great collection of people in this hobby of astronomy and, and astrophotography. We all get together here in New York. And there's some people uh, that have flown quite a great distance to get here. It was a one hour flight for me and Steve from uh, Ontario Telescope and Accessories, but I've seen some familiar faces already here at the hotel that I met last year, and I hope to run into a lot more down at, at Neef. So we're heading down there in about 10 minutes. I can't wait to see some of the new gear that gets unveiled at Neef. This is kind of the, the time when the new products come out from some of the major companies, so really excited about that. Here we go. I need a huge coffee. Mile drive. This is drive. probably the coolest guy at Neath. Oh, this is Greg. Hey, man. Gary's <laughs> okay, too. Sorry, Gary. <laughs> my, my buddy Greg. <laughs> watch was locked. Oh, your watch was locked. Well, in the <laughs> third one. So I'm here with Dylan from Australia and you all know who that is right he's got the uh, better skies than us and he rubs <laughs> it in our face all the time and I get to brag about it here at Neef which is fantastic so Dylan's actually doing a talk tomorrow right that's right tomorrow afternoon think. and uh, you're following up uh, a NASA astronaut I'm or no, scientist uh, I'm following up Alan Stern from the New Horizons mission and then afterwards they've got an Apollo astronaut so I have complete imposter syndrome kicking in right now. That's for sure. <laughs> now you have a lot of fans here and uh, actually a lot of the people I've talked to they're like you know Dylan's here? I was like yes I know Dylan's here. Like People are saying I the can't same wait thing to see when him. they see me. You know Trevor's here. <laughs> yeah, we're, yeah we're like the north and south YouTubers in exactly, this hobby. Exactly. Pretty yeah. cool. It's a real pleasure to meet you. Man. Oh you too man. <laughs> yeah. You, I, was, I would say because everyone's saying oh you look taller in person. You, <laughs> You look exactly the same as you do oh, in your good, videos. Good. So no, it's it's really it's been a pleasure getting into YouTube and doing um, basically just doing what I'm doing anyway and just filming it as I go. And and you are pretty much the same. You're, same you're going through the process of doing astronomy and filming the wonder of it, and I, that really comes across in your videos. The the awe and the feeling it, of what it's like to get data at the end of the night. Absolutely, just sharing what we get excited about, right? Exactly. At the end of the day, and it's infectious because it's real. Yeah. yeah, I agree. So you're going to play uh, Super Mario Brothers on your guitar too for me, right? <laughs> I'll you try. It? The multi-talented Dylan O'Donnell. Thanks very much. Bye. And I would like to take this time to welcome to Neef, Mr. Dylan O'Donnell. Woo! First universal multi-application telescope. You gotta see this. So we're gonna choose my visual board. And 
this is the visual. Now I can select the sky object and I decide to go on to planetary imaging. I'm gonna choose my imaging port in which I increase the focal length of the telescope. This 600 becomes a 4000 right now scope. And now after I'm finished with the planet, I'm gonna go on to my DSO setup. So now I've changed, I'm putting a reducer and a flattener, guiding camera, filter wheel, and cool camera. Now this, this 600 becomes a 480 telescope. That's one telescope, visual, planetary, and deep sky with the push of a button. Have you ever seen anything like that before in your life? Because I have. If you can't already tell, I'm at the blue booth, which means it's Pegasus Astro. They made a long trip to get here, didn't they? This is Evans and Angelos from Pegasus Astro. Ultimate power box, the version 2. It's this one, this little blue box. More power, more power output, oh, right. more new heaters. We really have a lot here. of ideas. So you yeah. guys actually respond to your customers, yeah, you exactly. listen to them, you help them. This is our first priority. And you know why? Because they're astro photographers themselves. So yeah. you get it, you're out there doing it too. We have the new Focus Cube version 2. So you guys know, you've seen the Pegasus Astro stuff I use all the time. This is the team behind it. What an incredible first day of NEF. The so I've never talked so much in my life. Uh, connecting with a lot of talented astrophotographers. Meeting Dylan O'Donnell in person was really cool. I was very starstruck to see someone I see all the time on YouTube and meet him face to face. And I wonder if that's the feeling people get when they meet me. I saw some amazing products, new stuff. Neef is where they kind of unveil the new stuff and I saw some really cool stuff from ZWO, talked about two new cameras that are coming out. The guy who never stops, Prima Luce, he has some incredible new stuff. His whole fleet of shiny red new astrophotography accessories. He had a display on an Avalon, matching Avalon mount that's also made in Italy. Just amazing products uh, from him every year and he's a high energy guy. Oh, got to see, meet some of the faces I've been talking to at High Point Scientific. Loving the team there. Uh, it was great to meet some of them in person. They were, everybody was so busy. Day one is a very hectic day for everyone. So tomorrow will be more, a little bit more calm and a little bit more chance to uh, have some more in-depth conversations with some of these guys. I'd say at least a dozen people I ran into that I've never met before said, hey man, when are you gonna cut that tree down in your backyard? I have a feeling the guys are gonna give me a hard time for going to bed early last night. The weather for Neef has been absolutely beautiful. Two days of nothing but sun and it's gone up to 18 during the day, which is great for the solar observing. I just came down to the lobby from my room. I'm a little early. I wonder how late the guys stayed up last night. I ran into two people. Uh, one woman was walking a chocolate lab in the lobby, so obviously I asked to uh, to pet the dog, and uh, she's like, are you the vlogger guy? And I'm like, oh yeah, and I'm like, wait, no, I'm not the vlogger guy, I'm not <laughs> Casey Neistat or anything. She's like, no, uh, I'm, she's like, what's your channel? I'm like, Astro Backyard. She's like, oh, I watched your video in the hotel room last night. She's like, you should bring Rudy next time, There's is this is a dog-friendly hotel. I'm like, I may just do that. How's it going, everybody? I'm sure you know who this man is right here. Hi. He has been the talk of the show at Nate. <laughs> I think I've been the talk of the show. <laughs> Since I got him here, I want to ask him three questions. How many clear nights a year do you actually get in Australia where you are? Okay, so it depends on where you are, of course. Uh, in the middle of Australia, it's dry. It's bone dry. So it's clear nights, it's no light pollution at all. Uh, where I am, sort of a little bit north in the country, it's subtropical. So it's wet. Uh, we have, uh, I don't know how your... Uh, winter has been but our summer has been atrocious we i haven't seen really i had maybe three nights to shoot a rhino i feel kind of bad now for my thoughts on like oh it's not fair it's clear all the time <laughs> but that you're not living in in central australia no, where it's dry all, all the time yeah. my buddy's in uh Mula Luba. i think that's what it's called oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. do you know where that is i, I do actually yeah so I, his snapchats it just looks like like he's on vacation all the time <laughs> so i assume that was all of australia <laughs> Yeah, well, I live in Byron Bay, which is sort of a hippie paradise as well. Like, um, people like Matt Damon and Miley Cyrus and Chris Hemsworth, they all live there. Really? So it's this cool like beach town and it's, uh, I, I have to say, I live in paradise, yeah. <laughs> your best, oh, this is, this is going to be so hard. Your, your favorite image you've ever taken and why? 
Yeah, that, that is a hard one um, because the images that I went viral for and that I have eight pods for are moon images. Uh, but if, if you watch my channel, you know I'm, I'm really not a fan of the moon, so it's this dirty secret I have. Uh, I do like my moon and lunar transit images, uh, but I, I've always been a nebula guy. I just love nebulas. So the biggest, brightest nebula is Carina, and I just can't go past Carina. I, I shoot Carina over and over and over. And, uh, I so do not blame you. My favorite photo at any given time is my last Carina photo. That's exactly the answer I knew you'd have. <laughs> so it's your la latest photo of the Carina nebula, because it's the one that jumps out to me, because it was amazing. And that was with the RAS. The RAS 8, yeah. So and that worked out. It's, it's a brilliant equipment with a brilliant target. I just had to step aside and let it do all the work. Don't you find when it's a really good product and you're just gushing over it and you're like, you know, it really sounds like I'm trying to sell it, but no, <laughs> like I'm actually really that excited about it and it is that amazing. Yeah. My, right. my first shot through the RASA at F2 was on Thor's helmet and I was like, that was I 60, that. 60 yeah. seconds. <laughs> I'm like, this is uh, like, I had the feeling of like, I'll never not use this scope ever again. Like, yeah, <laughs> yeah I want to collect them all. I've got, I've got two of the RASAs now, but I really want that 36. At each size, yeah, <laughs> yeah. And you were shooting Hyperstar before that, That's right? That's right. So I got addicted to F2 um, and Hyperstar, particularly because I saw Chris had Field on the space station. They installed uh, nine and a quarter on the space station with Hyperstar, and I thought it's good enough for NASA. Then uh, I, I'm going to get that for my backyard. Let's see, what's the last one? Oh, okay, it's family life. If you don't, well, you share your family just like I do. Right? Yeah. Isn't that the weirdest part when you run into people and they're asking how your wife is? And your kids? It's like, oh yeah, you know everything about me, and I have never, I don't know who you are. Uh, a few people have come up to Anna and uh, and recognized her and, and complimented her on being in, in a particular video, which has been quite surreal for her. Uh, vis visual astronomy versus uh... visual astronomy and packing for for NEAF and that sort of thing. So that's pretty cool. I think I think she secretly likes. You're, I just remember now your your video with the beard, visual astronomy, where it's the, it's rambling. And if you if you look over here, and it, that's exactly how it is. It's like it's, it's a culture that we experience because we know we know these people and we know us. And, and and I like to poke fun at ourselves as well and poke fun at the culture of astronomy. That's it. And I think um, people who understand that they get the joke and. Um, and there's a few people who were slightly offended, but uh, I think most people get the joke. I, don't know, I think this, this latest generation of equipment and technology is getting to the point where it's not just one click, but you know, there's still stuff to learn. But especially with our generation, it was very uh, computer focused and technology focused where we're into the technology and that's that's where I think uh, we're doing well. Okay, well thanks a lot man for chatting and uh, I look forward to your talk at 1.30. <laughs> I can't wait for that. And uh, obviously subscribe to Dylan's channel if you haven't already. So thanks a lot, man. Thanks, Trevor. Yep. I have to say, maybe the exception of the astronauts, has probably traveled the longest distance to get here. Okay? Mr. Dylan O'Donnell. Woo! Being an amateur backyard astrophotographer can get lonely at times. It's not exactly a popular pastime for most people, but when you're at NEEF, everyone just gets it. Their eyes light up when you ask them about their latest project, and you suddenly feel like you found your kind of people. I go to the uh, snack bar and there's a little girl there who sees my vlogging camera 
and she's like are you on YouTube and I was like oh yeah I am on YouTube uh, you know got a channel she's like oh cool that's really awesome and I was like do you want to be on YouTube and I'm gonna sh I was gonna get a clip of me like you know high-fiving or something and she's like actually I have my own channel thank you 